Welcome to the first proper video in this Excel eSports course. So I've made an intro video already, which will go through everything we're gonna cover in this course. This is the first proper video and we're gonna talk about case uh, layout and what to do first. So this is mostly aimed at people that are looking to compete that are beginners, um, but there'll be some other value in it as well. So I wanna cover why you should sign up, how you should sign up, the logistics of how it all works, how to actually compete, because no one really talks about that. And then we're gonna go through what the standard case layouts will look like, some tips there, and then what to do first in a competition. So whether you're competing or not, the absolute best way to learn Excel, probably the only way is by doing. So you can watch as many videos as you like, and I'm gonna provide lots of case files for you to do little challenges throughout this series but you need to do them for it to stick in your brain. Now, if you sign up to the Excel World Championships, you will be given cases every month that will have these little challenges in. So in my opinion, it's the best way to learn. Most people will probably think it's not approachable because Excel World Championships sounds so far out of reach, but actually each month you'll get a little competition file, it takes 30 minutes, that's your time limit, seven questions and levels of difficulty. Almost everybody in my office could do level one and two. It, the difficulty builds incrementally, so it's actually very approachable for beginners and will teach you a lot if you choose to sign up. So let's talk about how to find some free cases and then how to sign up if you would like to, to the monthly challenges. So first of all, you're gonna to come to excel-esports.com and then you're gonna to go to the shop. So I would highly recommend if you haven't done any of this before, is to go to this case studies section and find all the free courses. So let's go Excel Esports and then you can sort by price. So let's sort low to high here. And what you'll see is almost two full pages of free cases that you can download. Um, and have a go. So do that, have a go at some of the questions, see how far you can get in these cases. That will give you a good gauge of your skill so far, and it will probably teach you a few tips and tricks along the way. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, and again, I would highly recommend doing that, you'll come to the Excel eSports shop and go on to a seasonal pass here, 2025. The best way to do it is to come here on Black Friday uh, in November, and you'll get a massive discount and the pass for next year. So in 2026 pass, I imagine that Black Friday will be on a, on a heavy discount. You can sign up and you'll get access to all cases every month. Now, in my opinion, this is way better than the free cases because you are kind of forced to compete live real time and it gets addictive seeing your score go up every month as you improve. Half an hour isn't that much time investment and the return on that investment is gonna be better than any other Excel course you can buy, any seminar you can go to. Actually doing these challenges and having them, them stick in your mind is so much more valuable. So let's assume you've signed up to this and then talk about the logistics of how it works. So. Each month you'll be given an, an email at the specified time. So the next one here is August 28th at 7.30 a.m. I'll get an email dropped into my inbox. And this is what that email looks like. So this case was supposed to go out at 4.30 p.m. You can see I got it at 4.26. You generally have 45 minutes until the whole thing closes down. So as you can see here in bold, it finished at 5.15 London time. However, when you click the link and start the quiz, you'll have half an hour before that closes. So you have a 15 minute grace period and we'll talk about how to use those 15 minutes later in the what to do first section of this video. So I'll click that link and what you'll see is that I've already taken this quiz, but I will show you a screenshot of what it looks like when you haven't. You will first have a link to a YouTube video which will tell you a little bit about the case study for that month. And then when you click start, your 30 minute timer will begin and you'll have space to enter all of your questions. So you'll see that on screen now. Once you've finished the competition, uh, there'll be a live stream where you can watch other people solve it, uh, talk about how to do some of the solutions in the live chat, and you'll also get your results immediately after that live stream. So the feedback is quite immediate on how well you did. Now let's talk about the case layout of what you'll be confronted with in the competition. So the layout is almost always the same. It's, it's very consistent. So you'll receive a file that has a case uh, tab that will give you all of your questions and space to enter your answers. So you enter your answers into these green boxes. Um, you then will transfer them into the Flexi Quiz page. It has to be online to enforce that 30 minute timer. And along with this case tab, you'll generally receive some data tabs. So this could be a map. In this case, it's just a set of data about wines and their attributes. And in general, you'll be using that data to answer the questions. And as you can see here, they scale in difficulty. So question one will enter something. Question two will enter something. The way each question works is it's generally 20 questions per level and one formula you can create and drag down and it will solve that entire level. In this example file, I'll have a tick here if I got the answer correct and I'll have a score. In the real thing, you won't have this. So if you're ever practicing, it's good practice to right click and hide this column so you can't see your answers. Now, along with questions, you will almost always have bonus questions here. And we'll talk about what to approach first, whether it's bonus questions or case questions in the next video about efficiency, the preferred approach you should take uh, and how to make the most of your time to get the maximum points. So don't worry too much about that for now. In terms of layout, it will be question numbers, level, points, 
enter your answer, and then some data that will be used uh, to answer the questions. Now let's talk about a few tips and tricks on layout. A lot of the bonus questions will often ask you to extract data out of what's been asked of the questions. So this case actually has an example of that, how many customers are not listed in levels two through five. So we need a way to collate um, data in the questions. So the best way to do that is probably a VStack. So you, you can use VStack. You can then click a load of stuff. So that example bonus was ask, only asking about questions two to five and the customers. So what we could do is we could click this, hold control shift and press down to move to the end. Keep holding control, click the next um, entry, control shift down, control click, control shift down, control click, control shift down. And now we have collated all of that data. So we can then work with that to answer some bonus questions. Since you're often asked to work with this, this question data in bonus questions, uh, a good skill to have is being able to collate all of it quite quickly. 99% of the time will tell you not to include the example. So we'd like a way to, a quick way to extract all of this data um, for only question numbers. And what we can actually notice is that in column B here, um, everything that has a question number is unique in the fact that everything else listed is, is text. So a way to do that is you can actually say um, filter, and then you can say, I want to filter from B to, in this case, let's say H for where B, and you'll need to manually override some of these letters because there are merged cells at the top, is a number. So if we wrap that B in is number, what you'll see is we'll actually get the data out for the whole of the case. So we have our question number, our level number, our points, and then all of the data um, that was given in the questions. So that's a, a little shortcut way to just collate all of that stuff that, so that you can work with it to answer a lot of the bonus questions. So that's a quick introduction to the case layout. If you haven't done this before, I would familiarize yourself with it because it is the same layout pretty much every time. In terms of moving around it quickly with shortcuts and whatnot and filling in the answers quickly, that will be in the next video, which is gonna be on efficiency and speed. But for this one, that's just a quick introduction to the layout. Now let's talk about what to do first in a competition. So as I mentioned earlier, you'll get an email um, and you'll also get a YouTube link to a case introduction. So I've got an example one here, so let's just watch this together. And I would highly recommend trying to maximize 15 minutes before you start the case to watch over this video in detail and try and gather as many clues as you can. Welcome to the road to Las Vegas. So since time is of the essence, they're always gonna give you an introduction to the competition. I would skip that, that's gonna save you 24 seconds. Good news. And then you're gonna pause the video every time you see some data and start to think about what questions might be asked or how you can work with the data. You and 24 friends did an Excel battle. Okay, so in this example, I know that me and 24 friends did an Excel battle. Okay, so 25 people. The guesses from the battle are provided on tabs one to 25. Immediately pause as soon as you see any data. So I can see there's gonna be actually 25 uh, tabs of data in this case. Five in column E and correspond to each player. Okay, so these tabs correspond to each player and they've entered some answers. So I'm gonna to have to do something with that data. Bad news. Also have a look at the headers here. So this says guess. So I can see that the, the data here is in a number format rather than text or a map or anything else. And we're looking at people's guesses. You all accidentally deleted the instructions and are unable to figure out what the correct answers are. Good news. You reached out to the FMWC and they provided you with some information to determine the correct answers. Another tip, I would also pause here and just have a look at how much points each question is worth. Sometimes the end questions are very heavily weighted and are standalone. If that happens, you can decide to solve that first. So this is where kind of a bit of game tactics come into play. Bad news. The information they provided wasn't the exact correct answers that you were looking for. You now have to read the rules of each level to determine the correct answer for each game. So let's just stop there. But essentially you wanna do this, pause through the video and try to do as much upfront work as you can in 15 minutes before you start your 30 minute timer and filling in, in the actual case. So in this one, we gather that we've got 25 players that made some guesses. We get gonna get some clues as to what's the right guess. So I'd, I would imagine um, they'll give us a player number and say, you know, player one got it correct, player seven got it correct, player nine got the next one correct. And we'll need to collate that. So what I always immediately do is I open up Excel and I start to replicate the data I've seen on screen. So I know that I had 25 tabs. So let's just set that up. Let's do five tabs for an example. And a little trick in terms of navigation, if you hold shift and click tabs, whatever you do on one tab will be done on all the other tabs. So let's just say sequence of 20, because that's the data we had. And then we had some guesses. So let's say 
rand between one and a hundred as the guess answers. And let's drag that down. And we need to refresh so that it gets everything. And then I'm gonna copy everything as value. So control C, control shift V copies everything just as values. So now I have stable base data that's randomized uh, for the guesses. So obviously the upfront work you do will vary greatly from case to case and you will use the YouTube video pause as much as you need to to try and start to piece something together. So live, uh, this is exactly what I did and I used the 15 minutes to try and gather everybody's data. Now, there are many ways you can do that. You have a full 15 minutes, so you know use it as, as, as much as you want, but you want something that you're gonna be able to copy from here and paste over to the real file to save you time. So let's just get my five players here across the top. Let's get our 20 questions and Let's just collate that. So, I have a quick way of doing that. You could use indirect or whatever. I've used HStack, and again, we'll come into all of these formulas and stuff like that later. But this is essentially my test that I would do that I'm able to collate all of the data effectively, that it works. I would come back and check, okay, 94, 1, 24, 94, 1, 24, and so on. Okay, so I have a method that works. I would then try to think about what questions they might ask. So they might ask um, to pull out a player from this list. Well, yeah, I can do that quite easily uh, and so on and so on. So if there's anything you take from this video, it's to use the 15 minutes to do some upfront work ready to transfer over to the real case. Take a stab at what the questions might ask and you can get ahead of the game. So that is it for this video. Uh, links to the full playlist everywhere in the top corner, in the comments, in the description. Um, subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the, the videos that get released here. Next time, we're going to get a bit more into actual Excel. We're going to go through some speed and efficiency tips. Uh, so that will include stuff like navigation, shortcuts, the approach um, you might want to take uh, on the questions and some other little time-saving tricks. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.